you guys today. Let me first uh, thank all of you for your patience and perseverance. And those of you that are just joining the channel, thank you so much. A special shout out to Derek's mom, Sarah. Uh, welcome aboard, Sarah. We're glad to have you. Um, for those of you that have been there from the beginning, thank you as well. Um, please share as much as possible with folks and your comments are always appreciated. Um, after today's video, uh, if you'd like to see more on a specific topic, feel free to put that in the comments. The Nephilim actually are something we're going to talk about today in addition to several other things. So it's important to understand foundationally what has been hidden from the church over the last 500 years and uh, help people also understand that these are key indicators we should be looking for and that those during the time of Yeshua, uh, and many know him as Jesus, but his Hebrew name is Yeshua. Um, as he said, as it was in the days of Noah, so it shall be with uh, the coming of the Son of Man. So it's important to know what were those things during the days of Noah. Uh, so let's dig in a little bit and see uh, what this is all about. So, um, as I, as I, uh, quoted here, uh, it's going to be exactly the same as it was in the days of Noah. Contemporary preachers gloss over this and they just say, oh yeah, mankind was very sinful. But if that's true, we should have been destroyed years ago. We're just as sinful as they are. So the reality is there were several other factors during that time and it's alluded to in the words Moses wrote, as well as books, that the church removed, the universal church, and you know it as the Catholic church, but they are not the authority. So I, I want to be very strong about that. They removed books that actually give us key indicators, signs, and signals that we need to be aware of. And they did that 500 years ago. So let's talk about the book of Noah, or excuse me, book of Enoch as well as Second Esdras and Jubilees. Those are books that you can find uh, as, as extra biblical, but the reality is uh, the book of Enoch was quoted numerous times in the New Testament, as well as in uh, the words of Yeshua. So um, for the church to remove it is absolutely unforgivable. So... In scripture, what we read is that Noah was pure in his generations. That's a direct pointer to genetics. Um, yes, he didn't inbreed with those that would damage his genome, and most certainly his family was not tainted by the crossbreeding of fallen angels. I know, some of you are saying, what? <laughs> well, the reality is you may never have heard of this because most churches don't teach it, but it's important to know. Scripture points in Genesis 6 that the sons of God inbred with the daughters of men. Now, a lot of preachers and seminaries uh, explain, oh, the sons of God, those are just men that follow God. That is an outright lie. The Hebrew words that are used there point to angels. And we later learn those angels are fallen angels. So if you study the Hebrew, you realize this is those fallen angels, and they chose to violate their directions, and they bred with human women. Um, this resulted in what we now refer to as the Nephilim. So when you see skeletons such as these with elongated skulls, uh, they are actually very common, and we find them in a lot of places. And there's actually, in a video we did a couple months ago, there is a uh, financial person that has one of these elongated skulls. So uh, it's not a deformity. This is, he is part of that same bloodline, whether people realize it or not. Once this happened, we read there was far more to this than the interbreeding program instantiated by the fallen angels. They corrupted all of creation. Now, there were crossbreeding with animals and more, so all those fairy tales and Greek legends of centaurs and, and minotaurs and satyrs and more, they're real, folks. 
absolutely real. So, um, and you know, we have the artist depiction of certain things. Um, again, that this was possible by, uh, and we're learning how to do some of these manipulations in our labs. Keep in mind, 20 years ago, Dolly was the first cloned sheep. Now we have the ability to clone. We also have the ability to interbreed. And it's uh, absolutely terrifying that this indeed is the same stuff that was going on during the days of Noah. There are plenty of documented photos of these things that they're unearthing. And we actually had one of these unearthed here in uh, the New Mexico region. So um, do you hear about it in the news? Absolutely not. Because if they were to give credence to it, that would mean they would have to acknowledge the scripture is legit. Think about that. They hide it because the scripture is absolutely legit. Look at the size of this. I mean, um, we, we know some uh, more recent giants. Andre the Giant was a good guy. Uh, but the genetics that they come from is this lineage. Um, here's yet another skeleton that was an art unearthed. So here's the skull that's all damaged and destroyed. Look at the size of the bones. I mean, this is absolutely crazy. So ask yourself, in today's news, have you heard of genetic manipulation? You may have, and it never clicked what was going on. mRNA is a form of genetic manipulation. So, and this is a quote from the article here, which you can jump to. Messenger RNA is a single-stranded RNA molecule that is complementary to one of the DNA strands of a gene. The mRNA is an RNA version of the gene that leaves the cell nucleus and moves to the cytoplasm where proteins are made. During protein synthesis, an organelle called a ribosome moves along the RNA, mRNA, reads its base sequence, and uses that code to translate each three-base triplet or codon into its corresponding amino acid. So they can change people's DNA by introducing mRNA and read the article it's lengthy but it's got a lot of good information so now you know those jabs that provided mRNA they are changing people's DNA they will deny it to their graves but that's what's going on what will happen next is anyone's guess but the reality is we're hearing of premature deaths fertility issues and more the same types of corruption of the genome that existed during the time of Noah. It's only a matter of time where it impacts all of mankind. Yeshua, again, you may know him as Jesus, but his proper Hebrew name is Yeshua. Why would you change somebody's name? You know, my name is Reed. You don't call me a different name when I go to Russia. It's still Reed. Uh, you don't call me a different name when I go to... Uh, Ireland or uh, Greece or any others. It's still read. So Yeshua is his proper name. Look for something soon coming uh, because uh, if you follow the Hebrew lunar calendar provided by our father, we're somewhere near 120 years towards the end of this age, which would usher in the millennial reign on earth of our Messiah. So if time is going to be cut short based on Yeshua's own words, we may indeed have it right around the corner. And some scholars, myself included, see timelines converging somewhere in this decade uh, towards the end. So keep that in mind. Uh, I'm not setting a date, but I do know the time and the season. So let's examine a little bit of what else was going on during Noah's time. So Noah's time, blatant wickedness, which you can contrast with what our father's standards were, and that's provided in the first five books of the Bible, commonly called the Torah. Many argue that our father didn't provide this to those uh, before, so they call this time Noahic or no Noahic law. But we read that Noah, Abram, Abram, Isaac, and others all had awareness of what our father asked, and their obedience was attributed as righteousness, same as it is with us. Keep in mind, salvation is a redemptive act. 
our obedience and actions are what takes from or adds to your righteousness. So a lot of people walk from organized religion just as I did. I found the outright hypocrisy of the Old Testament is done away, oh, except for the money part, we want your money. And even the fact that nowhere in Scripture do we find our Father changing the Sabbath to a Sunday, yet man did it. If you go back and look in history at the Council of Nicaea in 325 AD under Emperor Constantine, they changed to a pagan day as it mimics pagan worship found in Babylon. So keep all of that in mind and recognize that uh, the churches have been corrupt since the 4th century. So where do we go? Um, Noah was told to prepare. And it took him over a hundred years to build the ark, and we had his family and likely hired labor to get it done. We're told to do similarly. We already read that there will come a time of great famine, great violence, great death, and destruction. Many in the modern church are taught, you don't need to worry about that. You'll be raptured. Scripture is outright and downright clear. That's not true. We have to endure to the end, as Yeshua told us, and you can find right around Revelation 19, those taken out of the tribulation preceding the bold judgments where the wrath of God is poured out. We're told we'll be spared his wrath, but not the run-up to it. And these are the ones that are taken to uh, the wedding feast of the Lamb. So take time and study the scripture. You're going to find those churches that are teaching you, oh yeah, you're going to get out scot-free, there's not going to be a problem. They're lying. So do keep that in mind. There are tons, remember, he ne our father never does anything in a vacuum. The way he operates and protects his children is always the same. So, take a look. When Noah was kept from wrath, they loaded up in the ark, and who closed the door? Our father did. And he, that protected us. So, what was required? Noah had to build the ark. That's a hundred years of obedience and blind faith. And then when it started to rain, remember, it never rained. And people said, yeah, yeah, right, right. What a joke. And when it rained, it was then too late. So when we look at Lot, Lot was kept from his wrath by walking out of the target zone. He was told to go, not look back. And we're called in Revelation to come out of Mystery Babylon. What is Mystery Babylon? It's the pagan church. And for those still lingering in that Babylonian worship, you're going to find this is a, an example for you. Outright destruction is, is uh, absolutely described in Revelation for the, the whore of Babylon, the church, that is still following pagan religion. So keep that in mind. Uh, our father is not going to be mocked or uh, have any of his words come back void. Joseph, remember, Joseph was a, a son of a promise. He was thrown in a pit and traded to slavery. And, uh, of course, Isaac, his father, was absolutely uh, horrified to find that he'd lost his son, uh, the son of promise. Um, so he was kept from death uh, of a slave and instead was recognized for his knowledge and wisdom by Pharaoh and became second only in Egypt to the Pharaoh. So uh, keep in mind, he was kept from uh, judgment, but he still was a part of the plan. Jonah, consumed by a great fish, was kept alive. Think about that. Three days in the digestive tract of any beast, you're going to be bleached from the digestive acids. So here he was thrown out. And he went and preached to Nineveh. So he was kept from being digested, but he was still there. And then he was able to accomplish his mission. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were kept from being burned alive in the furnace. So even in the midst of destruction, they were bound up, thrown in, and as their bonds were burned away, they were kept from destruction. And they were seen as like one with the Son of God. So you see, the Messiah, or our Father, was there with them in the furnace, and he kept them. Daniel, the same thing, was thrown in a lion's den. And again, 
uh, our father's hand was on him and kept him from being consumed. So all of these things are true. So don't for a moment believe you're going to be taken out. You don't have to worry about anything. The reality is you're going to need to be tested. Simple say a prayer, once saved, always saved is nowhere found in scripture. And in this day and age, if you don't believe something, you're going to fall for anything. So we're told much of this destruction coming will pass by those of us that walk in his footsteps. We're also told it will be a time of refinement, knowing where our loyalties lie. So keep that in mind. There's no way anyone's going to enter the kingdom without being refined. Tomorrow night is Passover. It's worth noting that that is an, an appointed time, one of the seven that are found in Leviticus 23. Are you walking in the footsteps of our Messiah? If not, I invite you to follow us. Um, he observed all things that were taught by Moses, not the Pharisees like our modern preachers teach, but instead only the words of our Father. Keep in mind, our modern preachers are teaching just like the Pharisees. They're teaching all these made-up things that don't exist. And the reality is we need to go back to the roots of where, what our Messiah not only did, but what he taught. He bought our redemption. Our obedience shows our love. It's not a condition of, of salvation. Salvation is already bought and paid for. We have to come to him in repentance to accept it. But then if we really are heartfelt repenting, then we follow his footsteps. So the days of Noah are here. Are you ready to weather them and endure them to the end? Shalom.